let's try something new, yeah? Welcome to my first music review. Starting with Patting Out the Disco's Pray for the Wicked, the 13-year-old band's sixth album in their discography. I have to preface this review saying Panic is one of my all-time favorite bands, so naturally I was really excited for this new record. Their last record, Death of a Bachelor, was really versatile and captured a lot of different sounds, which I loved. It took the reins of Sinatra, gospel, dance, and still sounded pretty distinct. And that's one of Panic's strengths found evident in every project they came out with, which is trying a new sound but still making it their own. And although they do that again here, I'm a little disappointed with the execution. Let's get into the track list. Right away, this album starts with a trumpet-filled bang, making for one hell of a first impression. Silver Lining is about wanting to excel at everything and wanting to get the best out of every situation. It's a very positive and uplifting song, and as Brendan describes it, a song you could hear at a 70s roller rink. I don't know about that, but I do know Panic's choruses tend to have a lot going on in them. Silver Lining's chorus features a brass line and a surprisingly prominent bass guitar. With Brendan's vocals on top, it's definitely familiar and welcoming to returning Panic fans. A strong intro, yet pretty light on the length of its verses, and definitely favors its blown out chorus. And when I say blown out, it's not for the better. There's way too much going on here, at least for my taste. Which is saying a lot, because usually I like blown out choruses, but still a decent opener. Oh, it's Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. Right away, this is my favorite song on the record. Not only is the song a hype builder, but the music video is also the prelude to This Is Gospel. A little fan moment there, you couldn't help myself. This is obviously another party song, but Brendan also uses it to make his own religious statement. The title lyric being, I pray for the wicked, actually being literal, as Brendan has expressed that he still prays from time to time. I like the chattering voices that take place on the intro and both verses to really flesh out this song's silhouette. The verses this time are an appropriate length, making the chorus feel more rewarding. And for me, Say Amen's chorus is the peak of this album, which is unfortunate given that it's only the second track. I love the accompanying echoing vocals with Brendan's voice, definitely reminding me of Queen. On top of that, the marching band style percussion with the snare drums and bass overlaid by a powerful brass line all make for a head-banging party anthem that I can't wait to hear them perform live. Hey, look, my Haylock Ma I Made It is about the corruption of fame and the corruption from other fames, and also shows Brendan's more realistic take on ambition and success. Being that Brendan has been in the industry for quite some time now, I have no doubt he's met his fair share of bad people, and probably for a time nearly became one himself. To me, this song has the most interesting lyrics on the whole record. When I enjoy the verses of a song more than the chorus, that to me is a sign of great writing, because the whole second verse on this song hit me way too hard, and I needed to do a double take. I I also love the double meaning of the line, Bible traders. The way the lyrics ride the beat sounds delicious, making it a sad song you can dance to. I like the sort of synth trumpets on the chorus and the accompanying cello on the second verse. Coming off of Say Amen, this song is essentially the repercussion of all the celebration, and is also a neat intro into the next track. High Hopes is about finding success in the journey to achieve your dreams, having less to do with the destination and more with how you get there. This song is polar opposite in tone to Hey Look Ma, and very fitting that they be next to each other on the track list, making them two sides of the same coin. We're greeted with another brass-filled chorus and string-filled verses, making for a more royal sound on this track. Of course, Brendan's vocals further elevate that sound. However, on the bridge going into the outro, the instrumental fades out and the lyrics take over, and I was waiting for the brick to kick in under the vocals and it would be a good headbanger moment. Instead, there's an uncomfortable swell of strings and hi-hats. It feels really out of place, and instead of building hype for the climax, it just feels awkward. The hi-hats throughout this song also feel like a bit much. With Brendan's vocals gleaming more than usual on this track, he definitely could have toned the percussion down a bit. It also could have benefited from less cheesy writing, especially coming off of Hey Look Ma. To me, this is one of the weaker tracks on the record. This is my road. In Roaring Twenties, Brandon talks about his experience playing the character Charlie Price in the Broadway musical Kinky Boots in summer of last year. Brandon uses the term Roaring Twenties as not only a reference to that era of 
booze, jazz, and flappers, but also as a way of closing the 20s chapter of his life, seeing as he's now begun his 30s. I love period pieces, and Brendan didn't skimp out on using a slew of different sounds to capture that classic speakeasy vibe. That rhythmic screeching from, I'm guessing, some kind of woodwind instrument carries throughout the song. Brendan's vocals are accompanied by more brass, this time sounding more foreign in style, as well as some jazz style percussion and some blues elements on the second verse. And the collective chorus is especially potent on the outro. The general sound of this song definitely makes me feel like I just walked into a speakeasy in the roaring 20s. This song, at this point in the record, feels redundant to me. This is yet another party song when I feel like we've already hit the height of the party with Roaring Twenties, if not Say Amen from the beginning of the record. The Broadway sound comes full force on this track, and halfway through an album that's essentially all bangers, it's pretty tiring. However, that may be the point given the prompt of this next song. Drunks explores the consequences and downfalls of the partying lifestyle, which Brendan has expressed his experiences multiple times before. The instrumental and Brendan's vocals feel pretty loose and hung dry, which really make for that hangover feel, especially on the bridge. And although this song is more low-key, it still retains its Broadway elements. The swaying guitar riffs and drawn-out lyrics make for a really smooth listen, which was definitely needed at this point in the record. The overpass relates to a relationship that is no longer together, but Brendan, or at least the character of this song, still tries to hang on to whatever he can. I love the lyric, meet me at the overpass, that the song is centered around. Brendan and this girl value this overpass as it's a place they can be alone and themselves together, which every couple and duo can relate to having their own space where they feel safe together. The song is very sassy with its female vocals, electric guitars, and high-speed percussion, and this is where the fanfare peaks on the album. It's as if Brendan utilized a full jazz band for this song, making for a really energetic listen, but still keeping it grounded with its lyrical content. It also takes a seamless break from all that energy on the bridge, once again demonstrating Panic's ability of switching tone mid-song. It's sentimental and you can dance to it. That's a banger to me. <laughs> Here, Brendan dives into his weed induced ideas talking about multiverses and interdimensional travel. Brendan's isolated, echoed vocals set the stage for the rest of the song. I definitely hear Pink Floyd's influence on the instrumental, not just with its use of echoes, but in its percussion and the bits of electric guitar to further complement the verses. The strings are much more prominent this time around as they carry throughout the song and create that soaring high feeling. It's funny to think people, upon first listen, will take this song so seriously, but Brendan was just baked. Brendan recalls his teenage years and it definitely sounds like it. Right away we're greeted with a squeaky tuba that's on a completely different register than the instrumental and it sounds awful. What's worse is it continues into the verses and the chorus doesn't fare much better with an overblown contralto performance from Brendan. As I've said before, Panic usually has the ability to change a song's tone from verse to chorus. However, this just comes off as confusing and it makes me feel uncomfortable. I get he was probably trying to harken back to his older style of music, but I don't think it works here. This is easily the worst song on the album. Nobody knows you know when you die in Italy. Just like Death of a Bachelor, this album ends on a piano ballad. Dying in LA describes the struggles of someone who moved out to LA to pursue a dream but ultimately failed. It brings forth the realism of LA in that in a city where dreams are forged, some of them have to be broken. It's really only a piano ballad for the first half of the song. Afterwards, it's taken over by an orchestra, ending the album on a classical swell. Although I wish Brendan kept the instrumental strictly to a piano ballad, and his performance on the song should have been in a lower register to make it sound more melancholy. I'm also not a fan of his squeaky performance on the chorus. 
the hell is that? In retrospect though, this is a very fitting ending to the album, as you could interpret the tracklist as someone's journey to LA and back wanting to pursue a dream. But I interpret this as Brendan's farewell to his 20s and him reflecting back on everything the past decade has brought him. The Broadway style production is very consistent throughout, and it's clear Brendan drew from his love of musicals as inspiration. Each song feels theatrical, and I can imagine Brendan in his own version of La La Land singing this album. This is definitely more coherent in tone than Death of a Bachelor, although I actually prefer those different sounds to this record. But I'm glad Brendan kept it to a tight 11 track list, clocking in at a 34 minute runtime, which makes for a pretty casual listen but I'm a little disappointed by two. This is definitely a new sound for Panic, like always. However, thinking about each song, they kind of blend together, and I only distinctly remember a few of the songs off the top of my head. But while listening through it, I did enjoy a good amount of the tracklist. Same and Hey Look Ma, The Overpass, and Roaring Twenties being my favorites. I don't love this album. I think it begins to lose momentum after the first half, I had to give this a few listens through before I could actually settle on an opinion for each song, and in the end, I just wanted to go back to their past records. But I don't hate it either. If you can get past the cheesy lyrics, this album will be really fun to listen to. I'll Say Pray For The Wicked is another one of those albums you'll save a few singles from and put in your Spotify playlist. And even speaking as a Panic fan, that's unfortunately all I'll be doing with this record. Now if you got to the end, thank you so much for watching my first album review. Don't expect these to be as consistent as my movie reviews, seeing as the writing process process for this was much more intense. I'd like to review at least one record a month, and of course as I get better I'd like to do more, and of course still keep the movie reviews consistent. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I hope the sound is better this time because now I'm actually in a studio. With padding.